This is the Making Noise podcast. You know, I think all the time about this project I did, God, 2014, 15, 16, I don't remember. So, yeah, I don't remember when we did it, but this project um, called Far From Equilibrium, it was with with Roger Zaire, that composer I mentioned, and with this physicist, Dr. Elizabeth Hicks, and with the choreographer, Megan Rhyme, and, all, and this graphic designer, Brandon Waybright. Um, and all these on this clarinet quartet sent the Broadway. We all got together and had this this project where we explored um, like the nature of like different physics ideas artistically. So like the choreographer created this half hour dance, and then Roger wrote this piece, and we played it. And there was like an interactive exhibit, and there was this design that reflected it. One of my favorite projects I've ever done. Uh, it was like this NSF kind of funded thing. It was really really cool. But all that to say, in our preparation for that. We had this, these discussions about our creative process. And I'll never forget Dr. Hicks in our discussions. She said, I, I was sharing about music and about, you know, what motivates us. And I shared about, our, you know, success and failure. And, and I said, you know, I think a lot of artists are just scared of rejection and failure. And she did not understand that. And I, I was sort of confused by that. And we talked and she said, you know, for me as a scientist, like when I fail, I have done a service to my industry and I've guaranteed that something doesn't work and I should spend no more time on it. She said, failure is information and it helps everybody do better work next time. And it like blew my mind, the idea that, that failure wasn't crippling or ultimate or final, but that failure was information. And I have struggled to believe that ever since then, but I've never stopped thinking about it. And the more I get into teaching and into higher ed and into education, the more I realize that that message is so freeing for students, you know, because success then is, is um, exciting, but it, it's fleeting. And if failure is information, well, then both of those things lead us to do more work, right? Success means, okay, let's do more of what we did that worked. Failure means let's try something else. This didn't work. And like, if you can take on that mindset where the process is the thing where like the process itself is the outcome, well then, then like failure and success become sort of like small potatoes compared to the joy of like doing the work, like the pursuit, you know, like the journey becomes the destination. And so during this process of like, okay, I tried to write and it, it succeeded, which was awesome. And I tried to compete and I failed and that was awesome. And I have since done more proposing of writing and more competing and I'll probably lose and win some of those again. And that's, that's also okay. Because if the point is to sort of excavate myself through these different, you know, making videos for a competition or proposing an article or a chapter or a book or something, if, if the point is the, the growth that occurs from those things, well then like, it's kind of like playing Settlers of Catan, like let's spend three hours setting up the pieces on the board and then get drunk and roll the dice, you know, like who cares? Like, you know, I did the work, I did the work and it was great. And so win or lose, like I, I did the part, you know, I, I did the, the initial setup. So all that to say, like, I think for me, I had to decide that like, I was okay with failure, that I was okay, like doing things that I don't feel as comfortable doing so that I could grow. And I would never have had the time to do these things if my entire calendar hadn't been wiped clean without my desire of that happening. But I'm grateful in retrospect that I had a chance to do all this writing, especially, and to learn like, you know, I do have something to say and I like, I like to write. And I, I do learn a lot when I make videos to compete and force myself to play at a high level. And even if I lose, which is what mostly happens, that it's still a valuable experience. And I, th I think I'm, I'm a better musician and a more resilient person because of that. That's wow. Uh, that's so cool. I, I love, I love the, um, that has to be one of the coolest explanations I've heard about uh, like using the, the lockdown as an opportunity to sort of do something more. And, and, and the way you explained it there with the, the process, you know, the, the, the process being so, so much more important than the outcome, like how you said you, you started writing because you had the time and then you were like, well, maybe I can, what if I send it to this guy or what if these people want, you know, like you said, the clarinet journal or something like that. And, and Holy crap, that, uh, uh, the scial saying failure is, know, is information. Incredible. 
I think about it all. That she's incredible. I, and I just, I wish that. I think when I was young, I got so wrapped up in like winning and losing, and I, you know, I like, I sort of, I sort of missed the joy in the doing. You know, it's easy to like get focused on being done. You know. But I feel like that's so hard because sometimes those finish lines are really far away. Like I'm a runner, and when I run a marathon, I can't be thinking about 26.2 miles on the first, the first leg. You know, it's too far away. Mm-hmm. The secret is to enjoy mile three, and then enjoy mile four, and then enjoy mile five, and then enjoy the rest stop, and then enjoy mile six. You know, that makes a lot of sense. I, 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 I <clears throat> I'm thinking about my own life, and like. Um... I've usually been pretty good with things like not using my cell phone excessively, right? In like the last month or so, that has gone up a lot where like I'll be using it when I don't even need to be, you know? Um, And I realized, one thing that I realized is that for me, it's like always needing to take in some sort of information, you know? And like, I'm not allowing myself to just experience whatever it is that I'm doing, like cooking, for example. I'll throw in a podcast while I'm cooking, which makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, maybe I could be a little bit more focused on what I'm doing, taking in the aromas or, uh, you know, kind of like to your point of, of running a marathon, you're like, okay, um, I'm in mile three. Now I'm at mile four. I'm not thinking about what's happening at the end. And I mean, it does, I, I don't know. It's not exactly a direct comparison, but. Um, no, I, I totally, my, my friend Luke um, has an amazing coffee roaster. He's a very small coffee roaster here in North Carolina pillars roast and he um he, i was i was texting him one night and he like stopped texting for a while it's fine he texted me back a few hours later like oh sorry i didn't text back i was roasting coffee i was like oh cool like why couldn't you text me back where was the coffee i was curious because he sort of you know made this like as if it was obvious that he couldn't text me because he was roasting coffee and i was like oh like are you are you like holding it in a like a pan? i don't know anything about making coffee i like to drink coffee especially his coffee which is spectacular right but <laughs> yeah right yeah. um he said, no, 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 I just, um, I use these machines, he said, but I have to really, while I'm making it, I have to notice everything. He said, I just have to, I have to smell everything and be listening and be watching. He's like, I don't want to risk disengaging from the process. 